Hello, everyone. Welcome to Loops and Leather. Uh, my name is Lori. I am the creator behind Loops and Leather. And um, I've had a bunch of people ask how to do the pinwheels pattern. Uh, I posted a picture of this scarf that I'm working on online. And um, a bunch of people were really interested. This pattern is originally an eight shaft loom pattern. And so it does require a bunch of hand manipulation as you're working across um, each row. So just some basics to get started. Um, you're warping your huddle. Uh, this is a rigid huddle loom. I'm using a 20 inch um, knitter's loom. And you're warping in groups of eight. So you have four of the same color in the slots, four of the same colors in the hole, and then you switch to your next color and so on and so forth across your warp. So I did this, um, you know, uh, about the size for a scarf. You could, you know, make it as wide or as narrow as you like. Um, I'm also using an acrylic knitter's yarn off a cone. I purchased a very large lot from someone that had knitting machines. And so this yarn is especially fine. It's really, really fine. And so I've doubled in my slots and holes. I've doubled, doubled up my warp to get uh, something around, I guess, a sport weight, maybe. But um, you can use any thickness of yarn and you would just warp as many alternating colors as you like for the width. I do recommend an odd number so that you end up with a center uh, color and then you kind of spread your way across. I also have uh, floating salvages, one slot and one hole of each color on my edges. Um, again, you don't have to do that. I just uh, like to have a floating salvage on my work. And for this, I'm using a 10 DPI read. Let's see if I can adjust so that you can see uh, 10 DPI. So there you go. Um, all right, you need obviously two colors. You'll need two um, shuttles. I've got my shuttle yarn is also doubled so that my weave is even. So since I've doubled in my warp, I'm doubling my weft yarn as well. And I've got a little dog chewed on there. Sorry about that. So um, this pattern does require you to manipulate six of every eight weft passes that you make. So the first one, just to kind of jump right in here, um, sorry, you're going to need a pickup stick. So I have like the standard, I guess, pickup stick. You can also use another um, shuttle if you like. I've got this really big shuttle that I sometimes use. Or I've also found super handy a yardstick. Um, again, my dog's got a hold of the end of this yardstick, so I chopped it off. It's at uh, 26 inches wide, but it actually works out kind of perfect for a pickup stick on projects. Um, I wouldn't recommend anything that's less than uh, an inch wide, inch and a half wide, because when you turn it on its edge, you want it to give some height, give you a shed that you can pass your uh, your shuttle through. But I'm just using my standard pickup stick for this project. And um, <laughs> all right, so we're going to jump in here and get started with the next color. <clears throat> so you're doing, you have, um, this is kind of an even, uh, even weave pattern. So since we've got eight, uh, warp threads per color and the repeat we're also doing eight weft picks and the way that this pattern works is i'm um, going to alternate my weft thread or my floating salvage threads so your first pass <clears throat> the first uh, pass in this pattern is four over four under four, over four, under four, over four, under four. 
and you just repeat that across. And if you know you've got four, right there, I've only got three. Let me just correct that. Um, if Since there's eight, if you're over four on the first part, you know you have four on the, <laughs> the second. On the over, under, or under, under, over, and under. And since I have my slot uh, warp threads, I'm under those on the right hand side. I'm going to go under those on the left hand side so it all matches. Turn up the pickup stick. Actually, starting a new uh, shuttle end here. So, I'm trying to do this without bumping the camera. I'm going to leave myself a tail. You do want to carry up. Your, um, your alternate color along the side. And then you just take your pickup stick out, beat. I'm not beating super hard. Um, you don't want to squish the pattern down. And all of these first picks are uh, worked in uh, the neutral shed. Your shed is neutral. Okay. So the next pass, I'm going to go over the Whole slot and under the slot yarn. Okay, next pass, next weft pass is over three, under one, over one, under three, over three, under one, over one, under three. Over three, under one, over one, under three. You also might notice that I don't have my uh, tension super, super tight on this. Not as tight as I would for a cotton or some other like a wool. And the reason for that is because I do have to manipulate each one of these warp threads for each pass. So I want not a lot of slack. I mean, you don't want it to be sloppy or what they call sleazy for edges, but um, you do need to be able to manipulate this and get your fingers in here. Over three, under one, over one, under three, three, under one, over one, under three and again because I on the right hand side I'm under my slop threads I'm going to mirror that on the left hand side turn my pickup stick pass my shuttle through pinch and get my angle so it's not pulling in and beat. Okay y'all, so thank you for your patience. I apologize that this cut out on me halfway through on my phone. Uh, it's part of the challenge of using my phone, so I'm switching equipment and continuing. So we ended with beating on our second pass. So next pass, we're going um, under my flow salvages, go over two, under one, over one, under one, over one, under two. Repeat. Over two, under one, over one, under one, over one, under two. This is the most complicated one. Over two, under one, over one, under one, over one, under two. I'll 
see if I can zoom in a little bit, if that will help. Over two, under one, over one, under one, over one, under two. And repeat, over one, under one, over one, under one, over one, under two. And we'll just continue across. All right, back to normal. My goodness. Um, when I we're gonna make sure we're carrying our. Uh, alternating color up the side and I also have the tail from when I started this color change so I had to rework my or rewrap my shuttle and we're going to beat all right the next couple passes are a little bit easier so the next one is down shed tabby weave and beat. Next one is up shed. Catching my carry color. I'm going to start ignoring that tail in about a two seconds. And beat going back to neutral and here is the second half of the pattern so I'm alternating my floating salvage from what it was and we're going to start with under two over one under one over one, under one, over two. So it's kind of the reverse of where you um, ended before you did the tabby weave or plain weave. So before we were over two, under one, and now we're under two, over one. It's just the reverse. And across. Under two, over one, under one, over one, under one, over two. And I will just finish this.
All right, so the next pass, this is the seventh in the series. We are going to be under three, over one, over one, or under one, sorry, over three. Let's do that again. Under three, over one, under one, over three. Over three, under one, I'm sorry, I'm messing that up. Under three, over one, under one, over three. Still said it wrong. Did that backwards. Under three, over one, Under three over one, under one over three. Under three over one, under one over three. Under three over one, under one over three. So again, this is kind of the reverse of the previous three one pattern. This is why this is just so time consuming. Under three, over one, under one, over three. Under three, over one, under one, over three. And last but not least, we kind of get into a groove. I'm messing up because I'm talking instead of just doing. Um, I want to be under my whole warp threads on this pass, so it's the same on both sides. I'm carrying my <coughs> second color up the side. Take my pickup stick out. Eat. And do make sure that you're beating evenly so that you don't end up with a project going like this or like this. And the last uh, pass in this set of eight, we are going under four over four. So this is the least, well, other than the straight tabby, this is the easiest one. I'm also putting the pattern repeats in a uh, typed. I typed up a uh, typed up the repeats. It'll be right at the very end here, so if that's easier for you, um, I've got it written down. You know, for some people that's much easier. And there you have it, guys. That is one section of the pinwheel, that's the burgundy. And then, so from here, I would switch uh, colors and start using the lavender and carry the burgundy up the side. And so you just continue on, oops, push that back down. Alternating between the two colors and yeah, very cool pattern. Super time consuming, but I hope this was helpful for anybody who didn't understand the written instructions or just kind of wanted to see how it comes together. Um, and yeah, so please like and subscribe. I do appreciate everybody who um, subscribes and watches my videos. Helps me know that you like the content I'm putting up and um, encourages me to do more. I love sharing, so uh, if there's something you'd like to see, please put that in the comments. I will do my best to uh, get it out there for you. But uh, do hit the subscribe and comment if you have feedback. And I will see you again next time on Loops and Leather. Thank you.